If you were to look at Judaism and Christianity, the problem of sin is the most significant dilemma for mankind in this fallen world. Since Adam and Eve ate of the fruit of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, sin had caused a separation between us and the Lord. Very early on, as found in Genesis 4 with Cain and Abel, sacrifice was established to be a pleasing offering to the Lord in the place of our sins, and the law of Moses perpetuated the pattern. These sacrifices were done with the tabernacle originally as the Jews wandered the wilderness, but then the final location was settled with the temple established in Jerusalem. If we then look at Christ and the cross, Christianity teaches that this was the central sacrifice that was foreshadowed in the sacrifices of the past, covering the price for all sin from henceforth through faith in Jesus Christ, even for further generations. The New Testament makes it clear that the shed blood of Christ is the payment for these sins as we can find stated in the book of Hebrews. Hebrews 9 verse 22, And almost all things are by the law purged with blood, and without shedding of blood is no remission. This passage here has been criticized by Jewish apologists, saying that this verse in its context in Leviticus 17 is for not consuming blood. Let's read the passage. Leviticus 17 verses 10 to 11. And whatsoever man there be of the house of Israel, or of the strangers that sojourn among you, that eateth any manner of blood, I will even set my face against that soul that eateth blood, and will cut him off from among his people. For the life of the flesh is in the blood, and I have given it to you upon the altar to make an atonement for your souls. For it is the blood that maketh an atonement for the soul. Notice how one of the main reasons why it was forbidden to eat blood under the Mosaic law was specifically because blood is given for atonement for souls. As the commandment is given first, and then the reason why afterwards. Now, often in response to Christians pointing out this fact, there is an attempt to excuse sacrifices in the temple that is brought up by those of Judaism, as they will explain that sacrifice offerings were only given for unintentional sins. While this still goes against what God had commanded under the law, as the chapter they are mainly referring to for this point is Leviticus 4, this is still a commandment that should be followed if Christ was not the prophesied Messiah, which shows this reason isn't even valid. Let's take the time to look at sacrifices involving blood that were not done for intentional sins. As commanded under Moses immediately before the Exodus, the commandment to post the blood of the lamb on their doors as a covering and a substitute for the firstborns of Israel was made. While this is not an atonement for sin, the consequences of not doing so would result in death. The law was officiated with the blood of oxen, in which Moses took the blood and sprinkled it on the altar and then on the people and stated, Behold the blood of the covenant, which the Lord hath made with you concerning all these words. This shows that the Mosaic covenant relied on blood sacrifice, which not only served as a covering for the people, but also initiated the covenant itself. Leviticus 5 verses 1 to 13 details that if someone is present at swearing oaths, touching something unclean, or swears with their own lips to do evil, that they are to make a confession, and he shall bring his trespass offering unto the Lord for his sin, which he hath sinned, a female from the flock, a lamb or a kid of the goats, for a sin offering, 
and the priest shall make an atonement for him concerning his sin. The blood was then to be put upon the altar. Leviticus 6 verses 1 to 7 has a sacrifice for if a person lies, takes by violence, deceived his neighbor, or lies about finding possessions that were lost, which is then to be returned where the sacrifice given is to be in atonement for them. Leviticus 16 presents the scapegoat and a sin offering that is to be the atonement for the people for all their sins, which is done on the Day of Atonement. There are so many other sacrifices that we could discuss that is directly tied to the atonement with intentional sins in the Mosaic Law. But this list demonstrates clearly that blood was a part of God's pattern for the forgiveness of sins. Christ became our sacrifice for us, and offers himself for all the world to whoever will believe in his name. Jesus is the fulfillment of the sacrifices that were made, and true atonement comes in accepting the prophesied Messiah.